Lewis Ortiz will take on Derek Rossi at the Barclays Centre in Brooklyn on the 22nd of April. I believe it's on the undercard of Sean Porter versus Andre Berto. Now, up until recently, Luis Ortiz has been working in the UK with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom. Um, understand he's parted ways with Matchroom and gone over to work with Al Heyman. And, you know, potentially, that was the correct decision for Luis Ortiz to make. Um, Ortiz is not getting any younger. There's a lot of debate as to how actually old this guy is, but even if we go by his build aids, which is 37 or 38, I believe, the guy is not getting any younger. Um, and the level of competition he's been in with has actually been decreasing. You know, a year or two ago, he was taking out guys like Tony Thompson and Bryant Jennings, and he was looking pretty good doing it. You know, more recently under Eddie Hearn, he's been in fights that were largely uninspiring, if we're honest, against guys like Malik Scott and guys like Dave Allen. And to be honest, those sort of fights have more exposed potential frailties in flaw and flaws in Ortiz's game, as opposed to making him look like a world beater and building him towards a world title fight. I think it's fair to say that Luis Ortiz has really lost momentum. And whilst I don't necessarily believe that this fight with Derek Rossi is going to be a fight that makes him uh, and propels him to the big time again, um, it at least shows that he's signed, you know, with Al Heyman, and uh, Al Heyman's been able to get him out near enough immediately after that announcement, and you know, onto a decent bill and in a in a fight. Now, Derek Rossi, I guess you would call him a, a gatekeeper, upper level journeyman, fringe contender, however you want to describe it. Rossi's a guy who. I don't think he's as bad as people think he is. Uh, he's an awkward guy. He actually started off 15 and 0 before he came up against Eddie Chambers when Eddie Chambers was a, you know, a big big name prospect on the way up. And you know, he's got uh, he's got a number of good wins on his record. When I say good wins, I mean wins wins at a sort of fringe level. Um, he's had 43 fights. He's won 30, 31, lost 12. He's been stopped five times. Uh, and recently, he's caused. Um, a bit of trouble to a few named boxers. So I believe he dropped Bermain Stavern in a losing effort against Bermain Stavern. He went the distance against Erkan Tepper and made Tepper look pretty terrible if, if memory serves right. Um, he won a majority decision over Joe Hanks when Hanks was 21 and 1. Um, just trying to see. There was, there was another. Uh, I was pretty sure there was another upset. Yeah, he um, got the UD against a guy called. Axel Moralimov, who I'm not aware of, I must be honest, but who was 16-0. and 0. So Rossi's kind of the guy who's become someone who's a little bit of an upsetter. You know, he's a uh, he's an upper-level journeyman, I guess you could say, and he's probably better than built. He's, a, he's an awkward guy. Um, he's got some punch resistance, and he may be one of these guys who's become relatively hard to match because if you've got a 10-0 and 0 prospect who you're looking to build... You know, Derek Rossi is the kind of guy who may be able to expose some frailties and on a going day even beat them. Um, so perhaps it's a good match for Rossi and Ortiz. You know, Ortiz is clearly a guy who's very hard to match. Rossi's possibly hard to match from a sort of journeyman or gatekeeper perspective. Um, so maybe it's a, it's a good match. Um, I would say at this stage of his career, uh, Luis Ortiz should be handling Derek Rossi and to be honest should be stopping him probably inside the first six rounds or so. Rossi, whilst he is experienced, he is awkward, he has got punch resistance. I think really the reason that Luis Ortiz has struggled against Malik, Scott and Dave Allen is because they fought awkward defensive fights. Malik Scott was constantly moving, constantly circling on the back foot. Dave Allen was using angles very well, um, you know, and, and really putting up an awkward performance. I've seen Rossi fight you know, a number of times. And for me, I think he's going to be in front of Luis Ortiz a bit more. I think he's going to be there to be hit a bit more. I don't think he's going to be moving like Malik Scott. I don't think he's going to be elusive. And I think that's the kind of fighter that can make Luis Ortiz look very, very good. Ortiz is very good when he's allowed to be explosive against an opponent, when he's allowed to throw barrages of power punches, one after the other after the other. And I think a guy like Derek Rossi may well allow him to do that. You know, I think against that Malik Scott fight, when we look back at Luis Ortiz, Malik Scott, I kind of always felt in that fight, if Luis Ortiz was able to throw a three or four punch combination against Malik Scott, the fight would be over. But because of Malik's constant angles and movement, he was never able to set himself to, you know, to, to throw a barrage of punches of that nature. And I think he'll get that opportunity against Derek Rossi. I think what's really key is the next fight for Luis Ortiz, because Ortiz has 
you know, he seems to have moved around promotional companies and, you know, worked in it with a number of different, you know, he's with Golden Boy, then he was with Eddie Hearn, now he's with Al Heyman. Um, it's all very well and good signing with a new promoter and getting a fight straight away. Um, but really, at this stage, Luis Ortiz doesn't have the time to be built. You know, he doesn't have the time to face three or four opponents this year and gradually step up in level, you know, maybe top 20 next time, top 15 the time after that. Luis Ortiz needs to be moved very, very swiftly towards a world title shot. Because otherwise, by the time his chance comes around, he's going to be too old. If I look at Luis Ortiz v. Thompson, Bryant Jennings, and then I compare it to Luis Ortiz versus David Allen, I think some slippage is already starting to show. I think Luis Ortiz has already lost a step. And I think the kind of fighter he is... Um, yeah, he's not going to improve with age. Um, so for me, the key question in this uh, new relationship with Al Heyman is, what's the fight after Derek Rossi? You know, and I think it's got to be a very, very, very big matchup. And unfortunately, if it isn't, I think I'm almost at the stage where I'm going to say, by the time things do come around for, for Luis Ortiz, it's possibly going to be too late because he's looking very, very old. I mean, even if you look at the thumbnail for this video when he was standing there with with... Derek Rossi, you know, how old did he look in, in that photograph? You know, it's uh, it, it's not good for him uh, to be dropping down to this sort of level. I mean, it's pros and cons. Like, I'm pleased that Al Heyman's been able to get him out instantly. And, you know, because of how instantly that matchup was made, I guess realistically it couldn't have been against a top 10 opponent. So, you know, it's not a negative. But um, Ortiz can't afford too many more fights at the sort of Dave Allen, Derek Rossi level at this stage. He needs to be targeting the... Deontay Wilders and uh, uh, Anthony Joshua's of this world, or else um, you know there's a risk that his potential may go unfulfilled. Um, let me know your thoughts on this fight, um, and let me know your thoughts on the new relationship between Ortiz and Al Heyman. Um, do you think that Eddie Hearn failed Luis Ortiz? I mean, in hindsight, that's a it was a slightly bizarre link up from Eddie Hearn because. Yeah, Hurd is usually a guy who plans a route quite nicely for a fighter, but I saw no clear strategy as to how they were going to manoeuvre Luis Ortiz. It almost seemed that they were using Luis Ortiz for showcase fights um, as opposed to actually trying to build him as a champion. So let me know your thoughts on that. Potentially, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who had conspiracy theories that Hearn was only working with Luis Ortiz um, you know, to keep him away from Anthony Joshua. And if you're someone who believed that conspiracy theory, I personally didn't, because it's, you know, it's, it's quite far-fetched. But, you know, if you do believe that Hearn signed Luis Ortiz purely to keep him away from Anthony Joshua, then to be honest, he's done a fairly good job. You know, he's just got another year older. He's looked very beatable in two fights. Uh, and now he's, you know, having to start again with a new manager or advisor in Al Heyman and he's dropping down to fight Derek Rossi so you know perhaps there's some credence in that let, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below um, do you think Ortiz is over the hill um, do you think he's still got what it takes um, to um, to go out and win world titles I think a year or two ago there was a, a huge consensus amongst boxing fans that Luis Ortiz may actually be the number one heavyweight in the sport in terms of talent and in terms of capability um, but I do think that seems to have, have, have faded now. And he certainly looked more vulnerable and more beatable. So let's discuss. Let me know your thoughts, people. Um, as always, many thanks for tuning into the channel. Appreciate you doing so. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you're new, you haven't done so before, do take the time to subscribe so you can check out all my other stuff. Thanks for tuning in.